Okay, hi, and welcome to RC Hacker. Now today, I'm gonna to be looking at the V antenna. So I've got one here that I've already made. They're really easy to make, and I'll put it under the macro lens here so you can get a closer look. All it is, is uh, you take, you can order these on the internet. They're just little pigtails or extension leads. You know, they're like, I think these were like $2 or something like that. And then you just use some wire and you solder them to the coax in the middle there. And this is one, it has a very good SWR and an impedance of about 50 ohms according to the simulations that I've done. And here's another one that I made up from an old, um, this is an old, what do you call it? An old, uh, the cheap antennas that come with the radio usually. You can sort of, I just cut the top off and I used a little bit of coax in there and then strengthened it up with this piece of plastic here. So let's have a look at the antenna design and what it's good for. Now, they're very cheap and easy to make. I'll, I can point you towards a clip where I've made one before. Um, click on this link here if you wanna see that. But here, I've got, these are all my antenna designs and I've been mucking around with antenna designs on a piece of software called 4NEC2 and I'll put a link to that below. And you can have a look at any of this work because I put it on GitHub, so it's all open source, so you can have a look at these designs if you like. Um, I'm not saying any of them are correct, and a lot of them are just things I've made up so I can test theories out and things like that, but you know, you may find them useful, the designs themselves. So one of them is, uh, what is it, a third version of the V, and it's an asymmetrical version. So this version I'm doing is slightly asymmetrical, which means one side is longer than the other and I just found that it, you know that gives you a better SWR. Now if we, we actually calculate the data for it you can see the impedance here is is uh, 50, 59 negative 1.92 that's an imaginary number but it's close close enough to 50 ohms and we get an SWR of 1.2 and 100% efficiency and you can see this is the radiation pattern but you know unless you really got your head around all the dimensions and stuff it's hard to get a picture a better picture of what the actual radiation pattern looks like is if you look at this diagram now this is a 3d representation I'll just enlarge it here of the um, of the V antenna. Now, if we, my head's in the way there. If we, you can see the orientation of the antenna there and typically the, the coax will go out the base here. Actually, I've got another model, which is maybe slightly better, which puts the coax out the base there. So let's have a look at that. Yep, so here's, here's another model that I, that I did previously just to see what effect the base would have because that actually acts as part of the antenna as well. So I, was, I just wanted to see what the effect of that would be on the um, actual, the actual uh, radiation pattern. So let's do the calculations on this one. So calculate our NEC output data, far field pattern and, and generate. And then if we go to here, if we go multi-color pattern, that's our radiation pattern there. Now if we zoom out on that a bit, and then zoom in more, using this, it's really easy to visualize what the radiation pattern is like. So ideally, if you're mounting it on, on, on a plane or something like that, you would mount it like this with the, with the um, two antenna parts going up, up and down. So say it was like, like a rudder or something, you would mount it that way, yeah? 
and the null points where it's got the worst reception are directly below in this case and are directly above depending how you want to fly if you want to go altitude you might orientate it another way um, if you've got a diversity system what you can do you can orientate it two of them so that they are at right angles to each other and then you've got all your bases covered so yeah it's a really really simple design and um, pretty simple radiation pattern I'll show you the difference without that coax it really doesn't make it make a lot of difference so let's just close that it's a plain old asymmetrical one Again, we'll turn on the multicolor pattern. Zoom out so you can see the antenna there. So you can see it doesn't change a lot with that with that ground line going straight out like that. It doesn't change a lot at all. Um, now, the antenna antenna design itself. You've got two arms and one is longer than the other. Now, the most important thing to know is that the longer arm will be attached to the outside part of the coax. Let's just, um, let's have a look at the at dimensions here. Now I've written them down from my calculations and this is the antenna that I've been using quite a lot. So the angle in between the two here is approximately 115 degrees and the length of the long side, I think this is the long side, so I'll put a, put a point there. The length of the long side from here to here is 177 millimetres, or 6 inches, uh, 6 inches 15 sixteenths or something like 6.9 inches or something like that but 177 millimeters I'll just put that in there for I know I've got a lot of a lot of American subscribers who are slightly older than me so they're probably still thinking inches and the short length the short side again you measure from right where it joins with the coax is 156 millimeters and it is six one eighth, six inches and one eighth, six and one eighth of an inch. That's how you say it, isn't it? Yeah, that's got to be it. That makes sense. So um, there, there your two measurements, and it is pretty tolerant to errors and stuff. And and this antenna is actually quite robust because I, I just use. Uh, Oh, the copper here, by the by, by the way, is about it is about one millimeter diameter. I think this was a 0.9, and I put those into the calculations. I'm not sure what that is in AWG. I might just pop that up in a note below. Um, but that's about one millimeter solid copper wire, which I pulled out of an old vacuum cleaner. Um, so there, you, there are your dimensions and making it. Like I said, I've got a link, and you just cut your coax, peel back a bit of the outer part, solder it and then solder the short side to the inner part of the coax and the long side to the outer part of the coax and and then you cut them to length afterwards. Um, much easier that you solder everything together and then and then cut them to length and then I always stick something in the middle to keep it strong. In this case it's just two bits of uh, I think that's just balsa wood maybe Ply. yeah that's just balsa wood with a bit of hot glue in the middle and squish them together it might change the performance of the antenna a bit a bit but you really need that strength there and um, this one as well is just a bit of plastic but periodically if you are using these homemade ones periodically you want to test them so you want to you will want to um, get your multimeter and make sure that that center pin is still connected to one side and that the out, outer outer part is connected to the other side um, worth doing just so you don't know nothing 
anything is broken in there. So, I, okay, for the, uh, maybe just for the advanced people, this is my current version of the multi-rotor that I'm flying, a non-acopter. Yes, it is a huge monstrosity, but it flies quite well. Um, I've got here a 2.4 gigahertz version of the uh, V antenna, and basically all I did was I got the existing um, coax antennas that come with the, with the FR Sky Gear, and you can buy extra ones really cheap as well. And then I just peeled back a bit of the outer coax and then cut these two to length here. So the inner part of the coax, I didn't have to solder anything because I just stripped it back to that point. And then I just soldered an extra bit of wire to the outer part of the coax. Let's, let's just give you a closer look. Let's see if we can get a closer look in here. That's better. That's a, that's a closer look. Hopefully it's in focus. But one side, this side here, is the inner part of the coax, and the other side is the outer part, and that's a very thin bit of copper wire. And I've got two, and one is orientated flat, and one is orientated up and down. So you get, because this is a diversity, diversity receiver here, it'll pick the antenna that's getting the best connection, the best signal. So as long as they're not the... Um, signal pattern is 90 degrees to each other you'll get good reception so yeah that's the 2.4 gig version all the other all the antenna i've just showed you is for 433 megahertz so that's probably you'll get good reception so yeah that's the 2.4 gig version all the other all the antenna i've just showed you is for 433 megahertz so that's probably the biggest one you use and then you've got the 2.4 small one and i find that works quite well um, I'm just using the stock FR Sky stuff and it gives me a little bit of extra range. I hope that's cleared it up. That's the V antenna. Quite a simple design. Uh, keep in mind all of this I've done from just simulations. So I haven't taken into, the, into account the velocity factor or anything like that. But that is, in my opinion, that's small. It's quick, it's easy. And if you really want to go anal on it, because every, all the equipment's different and it uses slightly different frequencies and at frequency hops and things like that. If you really want to get the best performance, make one of these with long wires and then test it somehow. You need an RSSI output and then you cut down the wires and um, try and figure out what the best length is. Keep cutting it down, graph the results and then put new ones of the best results. I did a whole antenna tuning video on that. So, cheers, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to cover a few of the other types of antennas with these type of videos, so stay tuned. I will link to those probably up here and here and here. So, cheers. I'll show you that later. And if we go here, select the pattern, multi pattern, we can see our radiation pattern there. Now, to the front, it's really strong, and then to the rear, it's practically zero, which means this makes this antenna. It's um, got a very high front-to-back ratio as well.